Hey guys, what's up? This is Tony from alphapursuits.com. In this video, I'm going to do a follow-up on the short triangle strategy that I've been doing since July. Now, uh, I have explained why I and how I actually decided to do this strategy in other videos. So in case if you're interested, uh, please take a look at those. Uh, but in this video in particular, we are going to follow up on the data that I've gathered since I started it and also show you some a correlation study that I've been doing to see you know how effective this strategy is so uh, so far so good it looks like you know it does give me uh, quite a bit of edge in terms of uh, winning ratio so as far as winning goes it does uh, give me a positive result and you know also cumulatively PNL uh, it is positive right now uh, as you can see, there's a lot of green on the screen here. So, you know, so far so good. But one thing that concerns me is the magnitude of drawdown. So in other words, the, the amount of losing for each uh, losing trade. And the reason for this is because if it, as of now, when, when the trade goes against me, since we are using a, a long time to expiration options, I'm just gonna let it sit there for a while, uh, as close as to expiration. Hopefully, it will turn into a winning trade. Now, this particular trade I actually got out uh, early, even before the the expiration, uh, because you know, the market condition kind of changed, and I wanted to switch into a different strategy and and needed additional capital. So you know this. A negative trade may not have been a negative trade if I have left it in there. But on the other hand, it might have been even worse than this. So, um, you know, hindsight is 50-50. It's difficult to tell whether uh, sort of, you know, is it going to be the same kind of result moving forward? But um, as far as strategy goes, you know, we, we will get out uh, when the market condition changes or we will get out uh, when it gets closer to the option expiration. And if, if the losing magnitude is so big that uh, I'm not comfortable with, uh, I will just get out even before the option expiration. So in any case, I'll, I'll summarize this in a blog post that goes with this video so you can see, you know, sort of in what, at what condition I plan to get out. Now let's move on to the, uh, Correlation study here, uh, since this is the most interesting thing to look at, you know, sort of that if indeed there's a, a positive correlation or negative correlation in terms of using the longer to expiration uh, option, longer days to expiration option. So as you can see here, correlation between Vega and ROI. So in the other videos, I've explained why I'm looking for options with high Vega. Um, and, and you can see here, uh, obviously, you know, higher the bigger the but the better as of now it looks like um, there. This is the positive ROI return of event spend, negative ROI. And if we scroll down this way, the ROI is calculated based on the margin and the actual uh, PNL. So uh, margin requirement is obviously the money uh, needs to be held for that particular trade. And so you know, the calculation based on that is sort of okay. This is the amount that I put in. And this is the amount that I made. So return of investment is uh, based on that money that I that that's been held. So that's the calculation how it's done. And so when we plot that on the graph here, you can see uh, if we look for a Vega options with high Vega, obviously uh, the winning ratio seems to be higher. You know, it seems like we we are more likely to, to win. And even though the magnitude of that isn't really um, clear at this point, because you can see, you know, with even with low uh, Vega, I, I did have like uh, maybe 45%, you know, winning 44% actually for this one. And then there's the 26%. So the big one seems to happen at the lower Vega value options. But still, overall, you can see, you know, with when, when it goes to higher Vega, as of now, I don't have any uh, losing trades. But then again, going back to the conversation earlier, because uh, those losing trades are, are still going on right now. So who knows? Um, as we get closer to the expiration, uh, which is a lot of the options are, are going to expire in January 2018. And so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens as we get closer to 
that point. And, and I think uh, by then we, we will have a better picture of, okay, in, if indeed this strategy is going to work or not. Now let's move on to uh, looking at the correlation between IV percentile and return of investment. So the IV percentile is based on the calculation that, you know, when I got in, what's the IV percentile? And then when I get out, what was the IV percentile and that IV percentile difference? So since uh, we are looking for high IV options, um, a lot of these trades are uh, happening around earnings seasons. And you can see, you know, I, I try to get out when the IV uh, dropped substantially. In some instances, um, I, I did make quite a bit. This was actually a surprise to me, like this Tesla. Um, it, I actually got in uh, in July and then I got out in August. And this was even before the earning because uh, the IV difference actually was negative five. So the, the IV actually went up but I managed to get out and hit the target um, be before even the IV drop. And this is partially contributing to, I think, uh, the high Vega value of the option because as you can see, I was in there for about months, okay? And, and during that time, the depreciation of the option value was quite substantial, it seems like, for these uh, options with high Vega value. And so this could be you know, another strategy we can go with um, you know, get in way before the earning trade, I mean, earning date, and, and just sort of hang around in there, um, assuming that the stock price isn't going to move too much and sort of make a substantial um, earning here, a sub substantial return here by just being in the trade and just hang around and, and earn that time value, um, this, that, that time decay value. Um, and, and again, it seems like options with high Vega seems to give us a, a much better return compared to option with low vega. You know, you hang in there, even the depreciation, the time value doesn't give us a, a pretty good return. So that, that's something um, kind of interesting that I found out. So maybe I'll, I'll test on that moving forward to, to, to do. So here's the result, basically, uh, as you can see, you know, with the drop, if there's a bigger drop in the IV, as you can see here, um, it's more likely that I will have a better return. Well, as you can see, the positive ROI, it happens, you know, um, around sort of the, the higher the IV, obviously there's no losing trade. So basically this is what this correlation uh, table is telling, uh, chart is telling us. So um, everybody else is saying the same thing, you know, sell it when they, there's a high, and imply volatility percentile and then get out when, when it drops. So um, this really shows that, yeah, it is true. Uh, even though there, there are some trades, losing trades that um, happening here, even even there were uh, drop in the IV. But when we, we can actually go in and analyze each single one of these and, and see, okay, so are, are these, you know, substantially have high Vega or not? And, and that will give us a better picture. But as of now, just by looking at that correlation between IV and return of investment, uh, definitely it's good to sell options with high IV. Then moving forward here, uh, correlation Vega plus IV and return of investment. So what I did was I basically normalized, I combined the Vega, combined the IV percentile into one value here, and that's the calculation right here and then plot a, a, a graph to show, okay, when we combine force Vega and IV percentile, what it's gonna look like against the return of investment. So as we can see here, you know, our return of investment at the bottom here, uh, the combined value is uh, this vertical value here, you know, zero to seven. And again, the same picture, bigger the value of Vega and IV combined value it, it, it is more winning seems like so when when the value is high as of now we don't see any losing uh, but when the value is low we see losing uh, and and again the losing is quite big um, and that this is what i'm worrying about as i talk about you know the magnitude of losing and it looks like it's pretty big um when when i lose uh, with this strategy and lastly uh this is the a, a new new figure that um i added for for this time uh, because as you can see, when we look at the 
days to expiration. Um, initially, at the back in July, I was using uh, January expiration options, and back then the days to expiration was what's you know almost close to two hundred. Uh, but as uh, we get closer to the end of the year, and uh, you know, don't get me wrong, I, I have been trying to look for options that can maintain this kind of uh, day range. But uh, since the open interest for like March expiration, February expiration for a lot of the stocks, um, the open interests are not there. So it kind of forced me into uh, using January expiration options. And so the days to expiration kind of keeps decreasing and decreasing. And now um, it, it's as low as to 80 days. So we, you know, it, it's getting closer to uh, what some other website is talking about, you know, ideal uh, trading days, 45 days of expiration, but it's still substantially longer than that. So I'm, I'm going to keep this data in here and, and call them a uh, longer time to duration, uh, longer time days, days to expiration options. But um, hopefully by end of this year, moving forward or closer to the end of this year, um, there's going to be more open interest for February and March options by then. And so I can start using those to maintain um, hopefully closer to at least uh, 100 days to expiration um, so to, to, to get this data going. But as of now, um, I, I wanted to see, okay, so by having a shorter time to expiration, is there any correlation? Is it going to affect this strategy? And so I plotted the correlation between the ROI, okay, and uh, this is mislabeling here. Actually, this should be day to expiration, day to expiration, okay. So here's days to expiration, and uh, here's the ROI. And as we can see, um, as of now, it, it doesn't seem to be affecting it um, as we get closer and closer, I mean, shorter and shorter. Um, but, you know, just, just wanted to see what, what it looks like uh, when we use the longer days to expiration and shorter, and when, when it gets shorter, what, what kind of uh, return of investment um, it, it is going to be, so. Anyhow, so this is the data that we have so far. Um, I'll follow up on this um, in a few months time once I have more data, but it seems like it's pretty promising. So thank you for watching uh, this video. If you're interested, please subscribe or go to the blog alphapursuits.com and uh, subscribe there, get your email added to the email, email list. And when I produce uh, new content, you will get a notification. So again, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.